This is the second and final part of this tale. In the first video, we discussed the rise of William Pitt the Younger's political career, but today we are talking about his time in power and eventual fall. So what happened? As Prime Minister, Pitt's first major piece of legislation was his India Act of 1784, which reorganized the British East India Company and monitored corruption. This act also created a board of control appointed by the king to oversee the East India Company. Pitt also had to deal with the country's 250 million pound debt most of which was accumulated from the American Revolution and the Seven Years' War. Pitt imposed new taxes to clear the deficit, reduced tariffs on easily smuggled items, and reduced revenue fraud by creating an improved auditing system. In 1786, Pitt also created a sinking fund, which an annual surplus of £1 million was used to buy stock and accumulated over 28 years. This eventually began to generate £4 million a year. By 1792, the national debt was now £170 million. This system worked well in peacetime, but did not function well once war broke out in 1793. Pitt's position of Prime Minister came under threat again in 1788 during George III's period of madness. I won't go too much into depth about George III's madness, but if the king was forced to abdicate, Prince George would become king and most likely remove Pitt from office because the prince favored Fox over Pitt. But luckily for Pitt, George III recovered in February 1789. After Pitt re-secured majority support in the 1790 general elections, he had to address the future of British Canada. The Constitutional Act of 1791 divided the Quebec province into two separate provinces, which were each called Lower Canada and Upper Canada. Once revolution started in France, the British Parliament began to silence reformers inspired by the French by creating legislative acts such as the Seditious Meetings Act and the Combinations Acts. In 1794, the Parliament also suspended the writ of habeas corpus until 1801. But going back to 1793, Pitt decided to take advantage of the slave revolt in the French colony of Saint-Domingue by trying to conquer it. At the time, this was France's wealthiest colony, but the result was a gigantic failure for Great Britain. In 1798, the French Revolution had also inspired Irish nationalists to attempt a rebellion against the British monarchy that they hoped would be aided by the French. Pitt believed the only way to resolve this issue was to create a union between Great Britain and Ireland. After the rebellion was defeated, he advanced the policy and a union was established by the Acts of Union of 1800. Great Britain and Ireland formally unified to become the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland on January 1st, 1801. Shortly after, Pitt resigned from office on February 3rd, 1801, mainly because George III did not want to grant Catholic emancipation. Pitt's political ally, Henry Addington, succeeded him as Prime Minister. Addington had to wait to formally become Prime Minister because George III went insane again. But he soon recovered and officially made Addington Prime Minister on March 14th, 1801. After resigning, Pitt just chilled in his castle for a few years. But in 1804, Pitt became increasingly critical of the government's financial policy. Addington's majority soon began to fall until his resignation. But on April 20th, 1804, George III had once again asked Pitt to create a new ministry. And on May 10th, 1804, Pitt's second ministry began. The second ministry was much weaker because Addington and his allies joined the opposition. The only thing Pitt really did in his second ministry was creating the third coalition with France, Russia, Sweden, and Austria. Pitt's second ministry was cut short by his death on January 23rd, 1806, at the age of 46. Before the video ends, I want to briefly mention some final things about Pitt that I failed to state earlier. 
Pitt formed the Triple Alliance in 1788 with Prussia and the Dutch Republic. Also, it is imperative to understand that the Prime Minister at this time was an appointee of the King. Pitt at first was not the choice of the people, but of the King which is how he stayed in power after a vote of no confidence. And if you made it this far, thank you and I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to see more videos like this. Also, you can follow me on Twitter to be notified of any updates towards the channel. And with all of that said, I hope to see you in the next chapter.